All right, what's going on guys? Today, we're gonna take a look at a budget modern deck, and this one is very nostalgic for me because we're gonna be playing four color zombies. The reason this is nostalgic for me is because the first real deck I ever built was tribal zombies back in the Onslaught block, which was composed of things like Undead War Chief, Soulless One, um, Gym Pump Polluter, stuff like that. But today, we're bringing tribal zombies to modern, and we're stretching into four colors. And that's because mana bases and modern are kind of crazy at the moment, at least for tribal decks. Since the release of Ixalan, modern tribal decks have had access to three different lands that can tap for all five colors. Those lands are Cavern of Souls, Ancient Ziggurat, and the recently released Unclaimed Territory. This is 12 lands that can tap for all five colors if we play four of each. Now, unfortunately, since we play on a budget on this channel, we will not be playing with the Cavern, but even with just the Ziggurat and the Unclaimed Territory, you have eight lands that can tap for five colors, and that really allows us to stretch into a bunch of colors, and I think this mana base is going to fix the major problem that zombies have. You see, the problem with zombies is the deck is being pulled in two very different directions. Wizards of the Coast has printed pretty good zombies in every color because the reason for the uh, zombification, if you will, is different on every plane. You know, like on Ravnica, they're like these fungal infected plant zombies, so they're green. On Innistrad, they're kind of like Frankensteinian stitched together things that are brought to life in a lightning riddled laboratory, so you know, they're blue, they're, they're science-y. And then Amon Ket gave us mummies, technically zombies because they are the dead brought back to life, but in a more sacred and holy way, so they're white. Now all of this is fine and good, but the best zombies really want us to be in mono black, namely things like Grey Cravecrawler, Relentless Dead, and Jeroth's Messenger really want us to have nothing but black mana in play. And that's the problem with zombies. We can't play these and all the other colors in the same deck. I mean, it's just really hard to play Jeroth's Messenger with three black mana symbols in a four color deck. That's, that's really, really difficult. Except now that we have Ancient Ziggurat, Cavern of Souls, and Unclaimed Territory, we actually can. We have 12 lands, I mean we're going to be playing with 8 because we're on a budget, but we have 12 lands that can tap for all 5 colors, and then the rest of our lands are going to be dual lands that all produce at least black. So we're kind of playing mono black in that every single land in our deck can produce black, but also we have so many mana sources that can produce so many different colors that we can actually play 4 colors. So we're a 4 color zombie deck, but we're still playing on like the, the mono black curve, which is kind of great. Although, I will say, we're not actually playing Relentless Dead in this build. Just saying. Anyway, after that obscenely long introduction, let's take a look at the deck. First off, we're going to play four Wayward Servants and four Diagraph Captains. Now, the reason I'm showing you these two cards first is because they are perfect examples of what we're doing. The Wayward Servant is just a two mana 2-2 two -two that says whenever a zombie enters the battlefield, we get to drain the opponent for one. That is, they lose one life, we gain one life. The Captain is a three mana 2-2 two -two Lord, that says whenever one of our zombies dies, the opponent loses one life. And it also has death touch, which can be relevant sometimes. Anyway, these might not seem all that exciting. One life just isn't that much, particularly in modern, because modern is so explosive. But remember, we're playing zombies. Our creatures are really, really good at cycling back and forth from the graveyard and the battlefield. I mean, they come into play, they die, they come back again, they die again, so on and so forth. And with these two creatures, we just constantly drain our opponent with every single thing we do. It's like a literal horde of zombies, it just gives the deck some inevitability. It just comes at you relentlessly. And everything we do, everything we play, everything that dies, constantly draining the opponent, and also things are constantly coming back and redraining the opponent over and over and over again, and it's actually kind of great. And we're also just, you know, going wide with a zombie aggro, so it, it's kind of nice, it's pretty cool. I mean, just look at Gravecrawler for example. We'll be playing four of them, it's a one mana two one that can't block, so we have some aggro with it, but most importantly, it can be cast, just straight up cast, from our graveyard if we control a zombie. So if we combine this with Wayward Servant and Diagraph Captain, it becomes a 3-2 
two, four, one, that we can swing with every single turn, because if our opponent has a blocker to kill it, then they'll lose life when it leaves play, and then they'll lose life when it comes back into play, and we'll gain one life, and it just does that over and over and over again. And that's basically what this deck is doing. We're being pretty aggressive, we're putting out a lot of power, we are going wide, but we're also just constantly generating value, and constantly draining life with just our zombies coming into play, and then dying, then coming back into play, and you know, so on and so forth. It actually generates a ton of value, and these little, these little one life drains don't seem like much, but we just get so much value out of them, triggering them over and over and over again, so it actually works pretty well. It gets even better with Jarrell's Messenger. Man, this thing is pretty spicy, and it's a really good card just by itself. It's a 3 mana 3-2 that causes the opponent to lose 2 life when it enters the battlefield, so that's okay. Okay, but then it has Undying, which means if it dies, it comes back into play with a plus one plus one counter, so it's a 4-3, and it causes the opponent to lose two more life. So that's already great. A 3 mana 3-2, drain the opponent for two. If it dies, it comes back as a 4-3, and drains them for another two, so it's going to drain them for four total. Also give us a 3 mana 4-3 at one point, and you know, it can trade twice. You know, it's just, it's really good to begin with. And then you combine it with Wayward Servant and Diagraph Captain, and now it's draining life when it comes into play. It's draining draining life when it leaves play, then it's draining life when it comes back into play, you know, it's just, it's kind of crazy. That's what I'm talking about, it's just so much value out of all of these recycling zombies over and over again. Some more great synergy with all this draining is Diagraph Colossus, and this can get nasty if left unchecked. It's a 3 mana 2-2, two, two, which isn't great, but it enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each zombie in our graveyard, which, you know, it's okay, it's nothing exciting. Usually, we don't get more than 1 or 2 counters on it, at least in modern, you know, it, it, games are too fast for the graveyards to really build up, but more importantly, each time we cast a zombie, we get a 2-2 zombie token, which means we get to sort of double trigger Wayward Servant. You know, we play a creature, drain for one, create a token, drain for one, all while going super wide and building a horde of zombies. I mean, I'm only playing a couple of these because they are a little clunky and slow. I don't want like a ton of these every game, but it can turn the tide of battle sometimes, particularly if the battlefield gets locked up. We can just have an alternate win condition where we're just, you know, casting zombies and draining for a ton, which is kind of great. The final card that works really well with our drain strategy is of all things, Timrit the Murder King. I know, right? This card is not supposed to be playable. In fact, it's kind of terrible. But no, it's amazing in this deck. The second ability I'm not too concerned about, so just ignore that. But for two mana, we can sacrifice a creature to shock the opponent. When combined with Gravecrawler, we can just sacrifice, shock, recast, shock again, over and over and over again. And then if we have something like Wayward Servant in play, we're also draining the opponent for one every single time we do that. So it's actually not bad. Like, it's actually a decent finisher. And it gets even crazier with like Jarrell's Messenger. You pay two, sack the Messenger, deal two damage to the opponent, the Messenger comes back into play, it drains the opponent for two, and then if we have the Servant or Captain, they drain for more life, and if we have the Colossus, then we get a token, which in turn also drains for more life, and so on and so forth. It actually just gives us a ton of reach. Like sometimes, we just can't quite get there, you know, the battlefield starts getting clogged up, and then we top deck a Timurit, we play it, we attack all out, and then we just start flinging everything at our opponent, and we take our opponent out completely by surprise. So yeah, it's actually kind of decent in a weird kind of way. Like it's not supposed to be playable. It's not like it's like the most budget bulk piece of crap jank card ever. Actually works really well in this deck. And one other draining card we'll be playing is Grey Merchant of Asphodel, of course. I mean, it doesn't synergize with our other creatures quite as well, but Gary is just kind of great. It lets us drain our opponent for X, where X is our devotion to black. And remember, we're playing Geralt's Messenger, so it's not difficult for this to drain the opponent for like five to seven life. So this is just another great way to close out games. You know, it can just come in, drain tons of life, and just end the game immediately. And then the last two zombies we'll be playing are Tide Hollow Scholar and Lord of the Undead. People forget that Tide Hollow Scholar is a zombie, but it is indeed a zombie. And it gives us some semblance of control because it lets us look at our opponent's hand and strip a card out. So that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice when we're actually being aggressive and, you know, playing tribal, but also we get to control what our opponent has in hand. Super nice. Lord of the Undead is the OG zombie tribal lord. I mean, sort of, if you don't count zombie master, I guess, but uh, does that count as a lord? Doesn't give creatures plus one, plus one, so, mm, you know. But Lord of the Undead gives our zombies plus one, plus one, which is fine. But the cool thing is for two mana, we can tap it and return a zombie from our graveyard to our hand, which is really nice at generating value. I mean, ideally, I would rather have Diagraph Captain just because it's more synergistic with the rest of our deck, but this is a great top deck for grindy matches, so we can just outvalue decks that are dragging us into the late game, so yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. 
perfectly happy to play a single copy. We can also gain some card advantage with Ghoul Caller's Chance, which is actually kind of awesome. For a single black mana, we get to return two zombies from our graveyard to our hand, and this just lets us continue that inevitable draining that we're constantly doing with this deck. I mean, one mana, get two zombies, no replay them, get more draining, no if they're Giraffe's Messengers or something like that, then no, it just gets kind of crazy. Though be warned, it's usually good to sideboard these out after game one because uh, people will bring in Graveyard Hate against us, so yeah, it's really good in game one, not so great in games two and three usually. And the final two cards in the deck are Fatal Push and Path to Exile. Even though we get most of our value from just casting our zombies, we are still going wide and we're pumping up our team with Lords, so so it's, you know, it's, it's not a bad idea to keep the board clear so we can go attacking. No, Modern isn't the most interactive format right now, but keeping the board clear so we can attack with a bunch of pumped up zombies, it works for us. Anyway, yeah, that's it. That's the deck. Moving on to the mana base. Do keep in mind that this is the most cobbled together pile of nonsense ever. So, uh, yeah, look, I'm not proud. This is not the most well-engineered mana base ever, but we'll be playing the very important playsets of Ancient Ziggurat and Unclaimed Territory, which lets us play all of these colors. We'll be playing four copies of Concealed Courtyard and three copies of Caves of Koilos. This allows us to play Fatal Push and Path to Exile, since we can't cast those with the Ziggurat and the Territory, and also it ensures all of our lands can produce black for Jarrell's Messenger. We'll also be playing three Sulphurous Springs and one Dragon Skull Summit. Blood Crypts might be cheaper. I'm playing Sulphurous Springs right now, but consider Blood Crypts if they go down in price with the printing in Allegiance. Anyway, we need these four red sources so we can activate Timurit. While we can cast him fine, we do need actual red sources to activate his abilities. We'll also be playing a single copy of Temple of Deceit, just in case we need a blue source to cast Diagraph Captain. It shouldn't be a problem, but you know, just in case. It also can scry, so there's that. And then we'll round up the mana base with four basic swamps. It's nice to have these just in case our opponent is playing, you know, Ghost Quarter, Path to Exile, Settle the Wreckage, stuff like that. Having a few basics to search up, you know, it's nice. There's also always the potential for Blood Moon, which will definitely punish us with our mana base, because our, our mana base is a little bit greedy, I admit. And moving on to the sideboard, we'll be playing Tormod's Crypt and Yixlid Jailer for graveyard decks. I feel like people have forgotten about the Jailer, but it's actually kind of great. It actually just removes abilities from cards and graveyards. So it turns off Dredge, it turns off Storm because the cards will lose flashback, and it even turns off Arclight Phoenix, which is very popular right now. And you know, as an added bonus, it's a zombie, so that's very convenient. So yeah, this really hates against graveyard decks and also provides us a two mana, two power zombie. Not bad. We'll also be playing Life Bane Zombie and Shalai. The zombie lets us look at our opponent's hand and exile a green or white creature permanently, and it has Intimidate, so it can be an evasive threat to boot, but it's basically just a green white hate card. Shalai, on the other hand, is our answer to decks playing a lot of spot removal or settle the wreckage, or just anything that's looking to target us a lot, like, you know, burn or what have you. And then we'll be playing extra copies of Diagraph Colossus and Grey Merchant of Asphodel, just to adjust those ratios as we see fit, and we can do the same thing with Path to Exile and Fatal Push since we'll also be playing a couple more copies of those in the sideboard. And that's it. That is four color zombies. This deck is actually a blast to play. I mean, we're going wide with zombies, but our opponent can just never do anything about it. If we cast things, they lose life. If things die, they lose life. Then they come back again, and then they lose some more life. It's great at both pressuring our opponent, like you would expect from a tribal deck, but it's also good at ensuring that we get value out of everything, instead of just getting completely blown out by board sweepers. So yeah, it's really fun. I love playing this thing. I've been enjoying it over the past couple weeks or so that I've been playing it, and if you want to see it in action, well, I'll be playing five games with it in the tournament practice room on Magic Online. And if you want to see those games, check the description, there should be a playlist, and I will see you in the first match.